sword in my steps. So this is my story. Yes, and this is my song. I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. And I trust in God, my Savior, the one.
Lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. If thou pass through the floods, I'll be with thee. If you pass through the fire, it will not kindle upon thee. I'm talking to some folks this morning who may have been through the fire. Can I get a wave? I'm talking to some folks who may have been through the flood. Can I get another amen? You know, God's children are not called to peace. We're called to walk in peace. But I'm telling you what, there's a war raging around us and we have a true enemy. I wouldn't go anywhere in battle without my Jesus. <laughs> Can you just lift your hands with me right now? There's another in the fire with us, brother and sister. His name is Jesus. There's another with us when we go through the floods. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Father, whatever we're facing today, I thank you that you are with us. That God, we are your beloved. That you love us with an everlasting love. And Father, I thank you that today we're going to hold to your unchanging hand. <laughs> How about that one, Billy? I want to hold to God's unchanging hand. Brother and sister, we love you. We're so glad you've come to worship with us today at the Corner of Hope. Hallelujah. This is a place, this is the oasis of hope and love. Can, can we give God some praise this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise team, you did. You do great today. You did great every day. Let's give them a hand, amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Well, I greet you in the name of the Most High God, the God of heaven and earth and all in between, and things under the earth, and as high as we can imagine and as low as you can imagine, wherever you go, where's he going to be? Right here beside us. God has been beside us this week. Before we go any further, though, we want to lift up Israel. At this very moment, they're launching rockets. They're in warfare. Iran has attacked Israel. We, the children of God, have power in our prayer. In Psalms 91, it says, A thousand can fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. 
Amen. Can I get a witness? Let me go over here and try it over here. I say a thousand can fall at my side, 10,000 in my right hand, but it's not going to come near me or my house. It's not going to come near my family, not because of who I am, but because of who he is. Can we give him some praise this morning? Come on, you're going to have to do better than that. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Just reach over and take the hand of someone sitting next to you. We want to use this as a point of agreement. And we're going to pray for Israel. Now, I'm not the only voice. God has every one of you as a voice. I want you to lift up your voice to the Lord Most High this morning. And let's all reach out and pray and lift up Israel. Father, right now, we come together in covenant. God, I thank you that you are moving by your spirit for Israel. We stand with Israel. We, we set a ring of faith around them. Angels, we charge you to encamp round about them and protect them, Father. No evil can befall them, neither shall any sickness, disease, or warfare come near to the families there. We lift them up. And Father, we call for revival, a messianic revival in Israel right now. Father, as we call upon your name and the greatness, and Father, and they'll turn back to where they can name a Jesus. We covenant together this morning by faith and total trust in you. And if you will agree with our brothers and sisters, I want you to shout, Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a... <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> let's get... Why don't we come right out of the gate of bucking? Can I get an amen? That's right. That's right. That's what we do in rodeos down my, down my area. When they open the gate, they shoot out and they start a bucket. There's no reason we as believers can't come out of the gate with a purpose. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we just love you today. My brothers and sisters, I love you. I'm so glad you chose to worship with us today. God has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. You are not here by accident. You're here by divine destiny. You say, well, Bill, I decided to come here this morning. Yeah, well, I praise God you did. Because God has a word for you here today. If this is your very first time with us, we're not going to make you stand up. A lot of people are shy. They don't want to do that. But if this is your first time, you are so welcome here. The first time around, you are a visitor. The second time around, your family. Doesn't take long to become, we'll, we will fill out the adoption papers ourselves, amen? You're a part of the family. We love you, we're glad you're here, but if this is your first time, uh, would you lift your hand up just a minute so we can recognize you, amen, amen, three. Hallelujah, let's give them a hand. We're so glad you're here today, hallelujah. I want those that it's your first time look up here. We love you. We're down home folks. We don't have programs ahead of the Savior. We don't have things that we put out there. We're just a church of love. We're a, we're a group of believers walking this walk of faith together. Can I get an amen? Some of us in here are toddlers. We're just learning to walk. Others of us need a cane. We've been in it so long, okay? But we're still going to walk the walk of faith. Hallelujah. We love you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for those that have come to join us this morning in worship. I ask that your word have free flow. Holy Spirit, this is all about you. We thank you for the anointed pastor, Pastor Kedrick. God, that he's going to bring the word this morning. I thank you for the musicians, that their heart is in worship before us, that they lead the way to the most holy place in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Folks, I'm so glad that you're here with us this morning. Hallelujah. Stick around a little bit afterward. We're going to be having... Uh, uh, 
uh, fellowship here afterward. We would love to meet you, get to know about you. God has a purpose for you. We'll not let that purpose fall by the wayside. Because these last days, and I'm going to say it, they started saying it when I was little. It scared, scared the pejeebies out of me. But brother and sister, we're getting in the last days. We have nothing to fear. God is going to bring home his beautiful, spotless bride. Hallelujah. And to help encourage us in that, I want you to give a big hand to my brother Chaz Ellis. Come on, let's give him a hand. He's always got it. Come on, brother. You got it. Oh, my gosh. How blessed the name of the Lord. Let's give Jesus a hand. Hallelujah. Let's lift him up. Hallelujah. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to stand to your feet and give God the best praise that you can. Hallelujah. If it had not been for Jesus, Lord, have mercy. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. You ought to give him praise. Hallelujah. You ought to give him glory. If you've got hands, you ought to be waving them. Hallelujah. If you've got feet, you ought to stomp. If you've got a voice, you ought to open up your mouth and throw your head back and tell the Lord, thank you for all the great things that he has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's good. Hallelujah. He's kind. He's been merciful, hallelujah. The, the songwriter said it was a fourth man in the fire, hallelujah, hallelujah. There was somebody in the storm with me, hallelujah. When nobody else was there, Jesus was there, hallelujah, hallelujah. When my mother and my father forsook me, it was Jesus that was in the fire with me, hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise on this morning, hallelujah, hallelujah. You ought to bless his wonderful name, hallelujah. On this week, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The whole world got to witness something, hallelujah, that no mere man could ever do. Hallelujah. And I don't know what you think about the stars in the sky or anything like that, but just to look up and see uh, a solar eclipse, hallelujah, where the moon uh, had passed through the earth and the sun, hallelujah. And I couldn't help but wonder and say, God, nobody did this but you, hallelujah. And everybody at my job would just pause for a second and they stepped out from the dock stand and they would look up and they were just mesmerized, hallelujah. And they were just looking up at the sky and thinking, Lord, have mercy, hallelujah. And it was a good place for believers to just give testimony to the goodness of Jesus, hallelujah. And I'm just so thankful that that God the same creator of the universe wants to know me, oh God, wants to know me and wants to know you. And for that, you ought to give him praise. For that, you ought to give him honor. For that, you ought to celebrate him. Hallelujah. Before you was even born, God wanted to know you. God wanted to have a personal relationship with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I bless the wonderful name of Jesus and you will have an opportunity sometime at the, at the closing of this service, hallelujah, to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that's the most most important decision that you will ever get to make. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And for that we give him glory, and for that we give him honor. Hallelujah. You ought to put your hands together for Jesus one more time. Hallelujah. Well, how, again, how do I follow that? Praise God. Woo! Oh, y'all look good today. Wait a minute. Woo, y'all hot. Hot over here. Looking good. So good to see you all today. Y'all may have a seat. I'm going to go over the announcements with you. And uh, wow, we got riled up. I'm about ready to. I'm about ready to take a run. What do y'all think? I'm going to take Pastor Vance with me. Amen. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. All right, we got a few announcements this morning. <clears throat> so tonight at the Billtown campus, Mark Hankins is going to be there. It's going to be a powerhouse night. Uh, starts at 5 o'clock, Bill Hankins is going to be in the house. Every Tuesday, 6 p.m. here at the Corner of Hope campus, we have Bible teaching, we have preaching, we have singing, we have prayer, we have ministry time right here at this campus at uh, 6 p.m. Corner of Hope campus. On Friday, 419, which is this Friday, we're having Jesse Gibson in the house at Billtown Road. It starts at 6 p.m. Um, I just got a text this morning. I think we're, it's a you know something that they're putting together, and it's going to be part of our Go Girls um, franchise, if you will, for the um, Evangel World Prayer Center campuses. So that's this Friday. So all ladies, how many ladies in the house today? How many ladies would say whoop whoop? Woo, woo, woo. Oh, I can't hear the ladies in the house. Woo, Come on. Woo, woo. All right. Okay. Just making sure y'all are awake. 
Okay, so then Saturday on the 20th, they're doing a ladies' luncheon. There is an RSVP for that. Sherry Holt is um, sponsoring that at the Billtown campus. Um, April 21st through the 23rd, Hendrick Boyster's in town. He's a fantastic teacher on uh, all things, well, Bible, of course, but starting churches. He started hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of churches. As a matter of fact, um, Janet Fawn's husband has traveled with uh, Dr. Hendrick Boyster to Vietnam. Many people got saved. They're planting churches. Um, even in her family, um, his sister received the Lord through that ministry. Amen. Everybody give the Lord a hand clap for that. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let me open my phone back up. And then April the 26th, we have our Fired Up Youth that's going to meet here at the corner of Hope Campus. I encourage you to invite anybody in your family that is a youth. It could be, you know, 12 and up that wants to participate. Any friends? We're going to be setting up some things for the youth um, to give out prizes and some different things. So even from the other campuses, get down here to the Corner of Hope campus on the last Friday night of the month. It's going to be a fired up time. Amen. Praise God. Okay, well, we're also going to receive the offering this morning. How many is ready to give to the Lord this morning? How many came ready to give to the Lord? Can I get a hand clap if you came ready to give to our mighty God, the one that stood with us, the one that's walked with us, the one that's yes. kept us, the one that pulled us out from the miry clay, the one that said, no, 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 you're not going to walk down that road. This is the road for you. The one that had you meet, meet your husband or meet your that's spouse right. or meet your friends, the one that saved your mom or maybe your daddy, the one that pulled you out of a dark, dark place. Amen. Amen. He's worthy to be praised and he's worthy to be worshiped in the giving. Now, I'm going to read some scripture to you, and I want, as I'm reading, I want you all to listen. And as, as I'm reading, get your offering prepared. I want you to just talk to the Lord about your offering, what you want to give today, what you feel like he's worthy of in worship today. Amen? And this is in 2 Corinthians 9 and 1. Now it is unnecessary, Paul's writing, now it's unnecessary for me to write to you about the offering that it is to be made for the saints in Jerusalem. For I know your eagerness, say eagerness, eagerness, to promote this cause. Number one question, how eager are you to promote the cause of Christ? Amen? That's a, that's a really, really good question to ask yourself. How eager are you to promote the cause of Christ? Amen? Praise God. And I have proudly boasted to the people of Macedonia about it that you're so eager to promote the cause of Christ, he's saying, telling them that Achaia has been prepared since last year for this contribution. Somebody had prepared a year prior for them to receive that offering. Amen? This is what Paul's saying. And your enthusiasm has inspired the majority of them to respond. So what we don't realize is our enthusiasm in giving and wanting to promote the gospel and wanting to get behind ministry also fires other people up. That's how multiplication happens. You know, you're not a single person. You're a multiplier. Say, I'm a multiplier. I'm a multiplier. Because I have a mouth. I have hands. I have ears. I have ears. I receive. I receive. I can touch. I can touch. And I can talk. And I can talk. I'm a multiplier. Ooh, I can talk. Woo! Amen. It's on that. I'm a multiplier. I'm a multiplier. Mm. Still, I am sending the brothers onto you so that our pride in you may not be an empty boast in this case, and so that you may be prepared just as I told them you would be. Otherwise, if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we to say nothing of yourselves will be humiliated for being so confident. So they were saying, be prepared, be prepared to spread the gospel because we don't want to be humiliated. You know what? Let me tell you something. The one thing, if you look at, and I'm not going to take much time, but if you look at some other, you know, let's, let's just say it like this. If you look at a Muslim faith, they just, they have floods and floods of money backing them. If you look at um, some other denominations and faiths, floods and floods of money, 
The Lord wants to multiply you. The Lord wants to download in you a gifting, a calling, the power to create wealth because the cause of Christ is worth it. Don't, you know, many times we will feel blocked. Like that was a God idea, I think, but then we stand in fear and we won't step out in faith. But for the cause of Christ, I believe 2024 is going to be your greatest year. Amen. I'm almost finished. Let's see. Otherwise, if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, to say nothing of ourselves or yourselves, will be humiliated for being so confident. That is why I thought it necessary to urge these brothers to go to you before I come. And I'm reading now the Amplified. And make arrangements in advance for this generous, previously promised gift of yours so that it would be ready, not as something exhorted or pulled from or wrung out of you, but as a voluntary and generous gift. Everybody say generous gift. Generous gift. <laughs> now remember this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to others. That's the amplified version. When you sow generously, you're, you're literally attaching your seed. You're attaching to your faith yes. other souls coming in. Amen? Yes. Every time I sow a seed, I think about souls. Yes. Every time I sow a seed, I think, Lord, I attach souls to this seed. So now start naming your seed. Name it for souls. It's great. We've got to pay lights. We've got to do all those things. But souls, he's after souls. He's after souls. He's after souls. Let's bring him the reward of his suffering. Amen? Now remember this, who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and who sows generously that, that blessings may come to others will also reap generously and be blessed. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his giving. Amen? Amen. So let's get ready to take, uh, take up this offering this morning. Father, I thank you. I thank you right now, Lord. I thank you, Father, that we are... We're cheerful givers. Lord, if we've been reluctant, if we've been having an attitude about giving, I think right now in Jesus' name, like you just break that off of us. God, that you just take a stony heart and make it a, start, a heart of flesh. And God, I thank you, Father, that you said that you would bless us generously as we're generous to you. Now, can we buy a blessing? No. It's all in the act of the heart, Lord. If we're begrudging, Lord, then you hold back from us. But God, when we're generous, you're generous to us. That is in your scripture, Father. Now, Lord, I just pray multiplication over this seed. And God, I thank you that souls are attached to it. And God, I thank you, Father, for all you're doing for each one of us. Download, download to us these God ideas, these ideas to bring in wealth to the kingdom for the cause of Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm going to have you all rise as we say this declaration. If you want to give online, we have the Corner of Hope ways to give up here um, if you need to scan it. But let's put up the declarations, uh, Caleb, if we can. We're going to say this out loud. There's something about declaring the word over your life. You know, I know I'm talking a lot, but I feel like somebody really needs to hear this today. Like there's, 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 when we, when Bill and I decided we're not going to hold back on God, the floodgates opened. It took some time. It doesn't happen overnight, but you'll just see things just come into step. Amen. Because he wants to, he wants to come upon you and overtake you. You know, that's what, anyways, that's a whole nother teaching. Let's just say this. <laughs> I go on all day. All right, let's say it together. One, two, three. Lord Jesus, I come into your house, not empty-handed, but I bring in my tithe and offering according to Malachi 3.10. The windows of heaven are open, blessings are being poured out that I cannot contain. The devourer is rebuked for my sake. This year is a continuation of a jubilee blessing. By faith, I have a better job, promotion, graces, bonuses, and benefits, business opportunities, commission. 
inheritance, rebates, settlements, and checks in the mail. Expect favor, entrance of loyalties and scholarship. Give surprise and no found monies. I'm using wisdom and self-control in my spending. My income is I have anointing for blessing, equipping me to a giver for the kingdom of God. All my needs are met and there is no lack. I have power to create wealth. The favor of God is upon me and everything I put my hands to will prosper. Chef giver, sowing good ground, bring souls into the kingdom of God. My God is applying all my needs. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Amen. Some songs, they are more real to some people than others. Such songs are more real to me. Because you start thinking, why did you save me after everything I did to you? Everything I did to him direct. One of those that used to refuse. I'm a businessman. One plus one is two. It's not... It's not one put 10,000 to flight, no. And then God comes and saves me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. First Kings, <clears throat> First Kings chapter 17. Thank you, worship team. First Kings chapter 17. And let's start from verse 2. And thank you so much, my good friends, my sister there, Michelle. Thank you for coming. My brother there, Tommy, and uh, Sean. Sean is my brother. Tommy is my sister. So just in case. But sometimes you need to explain a lot of things in this world we live in. Yeah. And thank you, Mark. Hallelujah. And thank you all for coming. First Kings chapter 17, verse 2. It says, and the word of the Lord came to him. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, next verse, saying, if you could help me, Bill, what was the word saying? The word of the Lord came. When I read the Bible, I've been, I've practiced everywhere where I see the word of God, I see Jesus. Yes. How can the word of God come? The word of God walk. In Genesis 3, it says the word of the Lord was walking in the garden. How can a word walk? Does it have legs? Does it have a human body? So whenever you see stuff like this, you must pay attention. It's okay. The word can't walk. 
But the word is, kept, is coming, and the word walked. Now, what was the word saying to him? Go ahead. Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, which is before Jordan. Go this direction. Not south, not north, not west, not anywhere where you think it's supposed to go, but go east. Specific directions. Specific instructions. If we all followed the specific instructions of the Lord, we would not be in the mess that we are in the world today. The reason why we are in the mess that we are today is because the west looks better than the east. So I'll go east. Oh, the west is comfortable. I'll go, I, no, I don't want to go east. I need to know. Okay, could you tell me what's in the east? You know, in Africa, when somebody says mountains, like in Philadelphia, that has vending machines and toilets. So I can wash my hands, I can use the bathroom, and then I can go and pray. In this, they don't have seats. They don't have vending machines. You climb in that mountain with a gallon of water, and you stay there seven days. I'm like, ah, no, that's okay. You all go and pray for me. Okay, what was the word of God saying? Go ahead. Get thee hands and turn. Hide yourself. That is what we miss as Christians. We love people around. We love to be, but there are times when you have to go and hide yourself. Away from everybody. Hide yourself in prayer. Next verse. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. What? In the world. The ravens are, in the Bible, the ravens are unclean animals. Well, is this God? How can God, it's like a roadkill. If I hit a deer, and then I bring you some meat, you know, after two days, I tell you, Michelle, I got some, hey, Mark, I got some meat for you. You're like, ah, uh, you know, man, I love you as my friend, but that meat that you killed, how long has it been in your trunk? Two days. No. <laughs> roadkill. The roadkill. Seasons. That's the title of the message, Seasons. Next verse. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. If only we can do that. If only we can go and do according. Everybody in here, at one point, God has said something for you to do. Some of it we did. Some of it we did. What he wants us to do. It takes time. It takes a little spanking. Come on. It takes a little jailhouse. It takes a little this and that. Come on. And then he said, Ravens to bring you what? Bread so he went and flesh in the morning. The Ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. First of all, what else has those Ravens touched? Did they wash their hands? And they bring you a cookie? They bring you bread? <laughs> How many want the ravens to come and bring you something, a cookie or a snack? <laughs> Trevor wants it. But that's what these ravens did. They brought food. They are unclean. Say with me, seasons. There are certain seasons that that is required. Seasons. And then, what do you mean the ravens are coming? Like, it's a prophet telling you that, that the ravens will come and feed you. Like, okay, you mean I should leave my house and go and hide? And you are telling me, you are saying to me that the ravens are coming. The birds, the dirty birds will come and feed me. Well, what's my guarantee? What's my insurance? What if I get sick there? And they'll feed you bread and a flesh in the evening. And 
he drank of the brook. Oh, I need my, I need my yeti <laughs> and lemon <laughs> and lime <laughs> and what? And meat. <laughs> I need all those things in my water. I need sparkling sight. I need those things. What do you mean let's drink from the brook? Do I have a cup there? Changes. When God is changing your life, changing your season, pay attention. And sometimes the things that he brings may not look like something that you want, but trust him. Go ahead, verse 7. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. I want you to pay attention. The word of the Lord comes. The word of the Lord came to Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac. And he took off to go and sacrifice Isaac. As he laid Isaac on the altar, the word changed. So, there is the initial word that you hear, but watch for the continuation of his word. If Abraham just listened to what God said in the beginning and never opened his ears to what God was saying when he arrived at the altar, he would have killed his son. But when he arrived at that mountain, God changed the word and said, do not put your hand on your son. Look on the right. There is a ram in the thicket. Go get that and sacrifice it. Do not touch your son. The same God who told him, Mark, to take Isaac. Now, some people may think you reneged. Okay, look. God has said something to me about certain amounts. I gave, we gave an amount, like, you know, in it's those days that we didn't have pennies to rub together. But you had like $2,000 somewhere. And then you give, and you know after you give that $2,000, you have to water it with your tears. Do you know what that means? You cry, not because you are watering it. You give, and then you water it with your tears, because you are wondering, how is this going to be? If that check clears, I'm going to have 300 dollars in my account. So you water it with your tears. You cry. On my way to give, I thought the Lord would say, I've seen your faithfulness. Stop. No. Put that check in there, and then you, you go back and you cry. Changes. So as he was at the brook, where God told him to go, Minister Charles, the word of the Lord came again. I call it the again word of God. The again word of God. What did he say? No, go, uh, where are we? Okay, yeah, go ahead. After a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Here's my, my key with this. After I read it, before the brook dried, the word of hell came to Elijah and he never listened. Because every place you go, it becomes comfortable. You become comfortable with the people. You become comfortable with the area. And it had to take the dryness of the brook for him to listen. The word of God, the again word of God. Next verse. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, the again word of God. Next verse. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Okay, but the first thing I'm thinking about is maybe this woman was married to some rich guy. <laughs> okay. She's a rich widow, but she wasn't. Maybe her husband left her a fortune. Oh, I'll go there. Maybe she's got a mansion and she'll just give me a place to stay and she can write me whatever check. She's a rich widow woman. 
No, she's not. She does not have pennies to wrap together. Next verse. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering up sticks. What in the world? God, isn't there a graduation? Isn't there a graduation like from the brook to the widow woman? And then the widow woman, I didn't think she's not the one that I thought she was. She's not Miss Kennedy. She's not Miss Trump. She's not the, she's not the you know, Rockefellers. She's not any of those. She's not Bezos. At least send me to someone that owned Amazon, someone like that. That widow woman, she doesn't have anywhere to take her money. But you are sending me to someone that is gathering sticks? My gosh, you can't even afford a two-stove cooker. She, she can't even afford a kerosene cooker. She gathering sticks? That's horrible. And then what does he say? Fetch me. Go ahead. And, uh, sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. When God changes, when God, when seasons change in one life, whether that season is accepted by an individual, whether that season is accepted by the people, it is God who changes it. The key is you trust him and you move on. Amen? Amen? Well, God does not run out of vessels. I want you to pay attention to this. God does not run out of vessels. Never. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 2 to 6. I thought somebody was going to bring me two, two more of these. Did you do that? If, if, if you have them, yeah, yeah, let's bring them right here. Thank you, honey. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 2. And Elijah said unto her, Okay. What shall I do for thee? Mm -hmm. Tell me what thou hast in, hast in thy house. And she said, thine, ha uh, thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. He has one pot of oil, which is a vessel. One, just one. Next verse, just one. Then he said, Go, bar thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Yes. Next verse. And when they are come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out un into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Vessels. You shall pour into those vessels. You shall pour into those vessels. See, I needed more water. You shall pour into those vessels and you shall set them aside. Those vessels, you pour into them. God will never run out of the anointing. The vessels run out. The oil remains. Vessels that are available. Why am I able to pour into these? They are positioned to be poured into. There will be an overflow. God. Yeah. The vessels will run out. The oil will never run out. 
vessels that have given themselves to the Lord. Vessels that are open to receive. Positioned to receive. Next verse. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Everyone is required to go and gather vessels. You are sons and daughters of this house. It's your job to go and gather vessels. Why? Position them to be poured out. Position them to be poured out. There are certain areas where you cannot be poured out. If this cup was upside down, it's, it's upside down. It is positioned in the church but it has decided not to receive. So whenever I pour on it, she, this vessel, whether it's a she or he, can walk in it, but will not be filled. <laughs> that vessel is around it. Proximity. You are near it. You are walking with it, but you are not filled. Every time you go back, you go back empty because you have to flip yourself and walk. Then you wonder why this vessel is walking in anointing. And then you become jealous of that vessel. Why? Because you've been coming and every time you come, you sit yourself upside down. You sit yourself in the back and you roll your, your hands. You don't want to receive. Why? Because you set yourself upside down. Mm. Receive. Position yourself to receive. Next verse. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. The oil stayed. There were no more vessels. The oil was still present. I pray that there come a time in our church when there will be more vessels and that can say the oil stay. There are no more vessels. We've evangelized. We've won everybody to the Lord. Our church, have, we've made apostles. We've made disciples. There are no more vessels. Instead of setting myself upside down, by the color of my skin, by the gender, by some knowledge that I know, by some doctrine that I know. Whatever it is that caused me to sit upside down. Oh, I cannot. Oh, they say this. They believe that. Listen. Few things. Jesus was crucified. Jesus was born of a woman. Jesus is alive today. Jesus in heaven. The Holy Ghost lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Period. Oh, forget all they, they talk too much. They are loud. Flip yourself upside up, up and let the Holy Ghost come on you. So, for this to happen, it requires everybody involvement. Amen? Seasons change. And we've come to that place where a season has changed for me. And I'm going to say it in a greater way. I'm not going far, 
but I'm not going to be here every Sunday. Meaning, it's unfair if I'm not going to be here every Sunday for me to continue being the pastor of the church. Bill and Susie are going to pastor the church, but I will come and be with you as it will. Amen? So the season changes. So I don't want you to... Let me, let me, let me go to this. Let me read this scripture first before. Acts 21, verse 11. Acts 21, verse 11. And Bill, I need you to come and sit right here. If it, somebody help him with a chair, come and sit right here. Okay. And Susie, you can come and sit right here. No, that's fine. They'll sit right here. Acts 21. When he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and what? And bound his own hands and feet and said, That says the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews unto Jerusalem, at Jerusalem bind the man that owns this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Next verse. Next verse. Go ahead, Charles, read that for me, please. And when he heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Next verse. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. I am ready for whatever comes for the sake of the name of Jesus. Go to the next verse, uh, the, the, the previous verse. Many and when they heard these things, both were that first besought him. No, uh, verse 11. No, no, I'm sorry. Go, go forward. Verse 13. Uh huh. Paul answered us, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I'm ready to be bound, on, to, not to be bound only. Yes. When stuff like that changes, there are cries. But the cry should not crush your faith where you give up. Like I said, many of you are my phone call away. It's time for that season to come. What the Lord has on for me is, much, is, is bigger than the church. I know you see me coming here. I preach here. I'm your pastor. And listen, I'll forever be your pastor. A lot of you. But I'm, I'm talking about the pastor of the church. I'm, you don't resign from pastor. You can, you can rem I'm not even resigning from the position. But they will take off. So Susie and Bill, I'm going to give you something that I cover myself in. I've wrapped myself in this thing for years. I was praying, and I was wondering, what should I do? And I looked at that. In my head, I said, no. What transform? This is what I cover myself when I'm praying. Because sometimes I don't want to be distracted even in my own basement, so I will cover myself so that I don't, I'm not looking at anything. So the way I'll do it is this way. Then I'll go parakatara, the makandar prekatara. I'll, I'll pray because I don't want to see anything. And those of you that have watched me on, on the prayer line at midnight, you've seen the way I pray. But you can imagine if I'm not praying online, because I don't care who's seeing what. So this is my prayer show. This is something that I've covered myself. So I'm going to cover you this. And Father, I thank you. I thank you, dear Jesus. 
for this. Father, I pray that you take them higher than I've ever been. You grow this church like never before. You grow this church, disciple it. Let there be many, many, many disciples in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. And I bless you. The other thing, I always anoint myself after prayer. I anoint myself before and I anoint myself after. You know, and I'll go and I'll put oil on me and I'll say, Father, come and say, Lord, let every flesh die. I anoint myself, let every flesh die. I will anoint myself before prayer and I'll anoint myself after prayer. And I've used this bottle for, I mean, I put new oil, but I've used this bottle for the last 18 years. 18 years. So this bottle, this pressure has been in my prayer room probably the last 15 years. So I'm going to give you this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Your kingdom come and your will be done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus. So this Take it and put it in your prayer room. Anoint yourselves in the name of Jesus. I pray, sometimes when I pray, I turn the lights off because I don't want any distraction. But I carry this light. I know where this light is. So if I want to see, I'll take this light and light it. I'm giving you this light. Yes, still lighting. And if I'm in the dark, I'll use this light. To, when I'm praying, I hear a scripture, I'll use this light to go to a scripture. Because my iPad does every email, I have text. Sometimes when you turn it on and then push, push, push. I was preaching somewhere and there was a shooting at a church in Texas. I'm preaching with my iPad and then some notification came. Shooting at the church. Well, you are preaching at a church. So I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? So my mind is distracted. So after that, I don't want that. So I'm giving you this light with a cross. Then Bill, you the pastor of the church, I'm giving these very costly, meaning financially. I had to, I had to water, my, water this seed with my tears when the Lord said, give this to Bill. When I say water, I mean crying and saying, can I give him? I'll give him those that, my, you know, that I got from uh, cords. I'll give him the cold one. I'll give him those. Not these. These represent the world. These are cufflinks that makes a declaration that you are not just a pastor. You are a world changer. So be it. In the name of Jesus. I don't know if I have something else in here. Yes. I have one more thing. This is my covenant. I am from Zambia. 
this is my covenant, and I'm, I'm an American preacher, but I'm a Zambian citizen. This has a flag of Zambia and a flag of America. I'm going to put this on you. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I'm going to put this on you. People ask you, like, oh, are you from Zambia? I said, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a citizen of the kingdom. So stretch your hands to them. Father, I thank you, and I bless you. Thank you, Lord, for this. Lastly, the Bible that I preached the message in today. Be one Susie. May the hand of Jesus carry you through and through. With the might and mighty. And here, says to Pastor Bill, all the best as Jesus and Jesus anointing upon your life with love, your friend, Kedwin. April 14, 2024. So, ladies and gentlemen, I announce you today the new pastor of Corner Park. You must be his vessel. Jesus will never run out of his oil. He will run out, you will run out of vessels. Remember that. He never runs out of the anointing, the power. He runs out of people. So if you want to be a vessel to be used, Timothy calls it a vessel to honor. A vessel to honor. He says in, in a great house there are many vessels. And then he goes on to say, if any man, in any man be, sunk, be paid of this, it shall be a vessel that will honor Jesus. What, what do you do now? Well, Jesus will give me direction. I'm not living here, but I am. So don't go around and start announcing anything. Nothing to announce here rather than what I have said. Amen? They will be here. And I want every vessel to support them. Vessels can crush, can differ, but it doesn't mean we can agree to disagree. Amen? That's why, you know, I love my sister Michelle. Like, if I bring up something that she knows is not right, she's like, ah, no. I may not like it. I may like, I'm not going to tell her. I'm not going to tell Well, she's right. That's just the way things are. Amen? Don't be saying that. Facts. Vessels. So stand to your feet and stretch your hands to them. And I want you to pray like you've never prayed. Yes, stand, please. In the, whenever the government changes, they are what they call instruments of power. You know, I'm, my family have been in government for long, but every government, whenever there's a change, they have what they call instruments of power. And the sitting president will hand over what we call instruments of power, and that includes a constitution of the United States of America or a constitution of Zambia, whatever country you are in. That is given to them. So I am giving you this constitution. 
This is a constitution. So I know you know, but I charge you in the name of the Lord, as your friend, as somebody that has been your pastor for all this time that you've been here. This is the key. And nothing else. So I am giving you this officially. And Father, thank you that they have received marching orders and we give you praise thank you lord for the anointing that you have in this room my, my knees are shaking trying to stand but jesus i give you praise jesus i give you praise thank you lord you deserve the glory Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands, or no, stretch your hands to them and just pray. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Anoint their feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Touch them by your Spirit. The feet are ordered by you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I sign off on them. I sign off to them. The next word you hear is your pastor. And from now on, this is the way it's going to be. Amen? Let's give the Lord a big hand and help me to get this out of the way. Go ahead. It's yours now. This journey has not in any way stopped. This is just a pause and a refueling and a refreshing of the direction God is bringing the body of Christ. We're one body. There are a lot of members, amen. There are member churches. We've got member churches. This great man of God is a man who prayed a prayer of faith. And I was healed. Amen. I was healed. Pastor Kedrick, can you help me back there put up Acts chapter 20, verse 32? Susie, would you please come stand by me, dear? Adrian, will you mind moving? It is with all humility that we receive that. You may be seated for a moment. Thank you. Thank you. We receive this. We receive this. And we will be faithful to pray for you, to pastor you, to love you. And even for those that, do, that don't want to hear it, to speak the truth. <laughs> I know I'm probably the only one in the room that sometimes I don't like to hear the truth. But brother and sister, that's what pastors do is we lay down our lives. So I speak for me, for my wife, my family. We lay down our lives to pastor you. But Pastor Kedrick, the Lord has given me a scripture. We're going to do this as a congregation also. Would you join us up here? face the congregation I want to read this to you now then family of the corner of hope we com com commit you to the anointing and calling of God and to the word of grace 
which is able to build you up to multiply and increase the inheritance, the anointing, and the word that you share among all the saints and all that are sanctified. Now, Father, for our pastor, we thank you that now you launch him forth. Oh, God, that, Father, there will not be stopping. It is like a comet, Father, that you are launching him forth and increasing the anointing and the responsibility, God, that Pastor Kedrick is and will always be part of us, the corner of hope. And Father, that his ministry, that the fire and the anointing of God shall carry him forth. We call souls into the kingdom of God. We call deliverance, O oh God, into those that are bound that anything that is unclean, Father, that those that receive the teaching will then in turn carry that forth. And Father, we bless our pastor. In the name of Jesus, we give you love, honor, and all the glory. We receive him. And Father, we receive this commission from him and from your hand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Kedrick, will you arrive? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we express our love to him? Would you stand with me? Would you stand with me as we express our love and our gratitude? Amen. Hallelujah. Now then, we're going to call for something that's kind of going to be a surprise to some. But we want to send him off. My wife and I have prepared, prepared something. But what we're going to do, we're going to set a bucket. My brother, if you... if one of you will help me. We'll get a bucket up here. We want you to pass him. Y'all excuse me for being just who I am, but we call it the Pentecostal handshake. Woo! In there, That does not equate to, to your love. That simply says we believe in what God is doing in your life, and we're sending you forth. Amen? We want to bless him. Also, if we can put the... Put it up on the screen. Thank you. You're ahead of me already. We're going to give to our pastor. Amen. We're also. <laughs> I got to tell you all real quick. My daughter knows Pastor Kedrick. And my husband was almost. We had always just battled many things by ourselves. We just did, you know, sometimes you just do and sometimes you need to go and lock yourself in your closet. But he called my phone and he said, I want to pray for, I want to pray for the man of God. I want to pray for your husband. I said, no. I said, he's, he's, he, he's not, he will not take this call. Bill was in so much pain. He had this hoodie over him. He said, I cannot, I can't even talk. He said, put the phone to his ear. And when I put the phone to his ear, there was a spark of faith that came back to both Bill and I. Because, you know, some, you know, we all die. We're all going to die. So you're like, well, is it the time? You know? But this man of God right here and his willingness to take time out of his day and pick up the phone and call my husband, it changed our lives. Amen? Amen. And Pastor Bob on Friday night at our Night of Hope, he said something. He said, when you get involved in a community that is not a rich community, it's a, a community that maybe needs a little bit more help or needs a hand up, a hand, you know, not really a hand up, but just needs a little bit of help. God will sustain your life. Amen. So we take this not with just... Oh, we're going to pastor a church. This is an assignment from the Most High God for a time such as this. We're in the end of the end times. And, and, and we're just, we're so grateful to you. Like, have a seat, Pastor. Have a seat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up and down and up and down. So. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to eat afterward, after the service. We're going to have fellowship. We want you to stick around. 
next week will uh, actually Tuesday night will be our first service uh, next week we'll be running a little over uh, we'll be going over some of our bibliography kind of where we came from because you we want you to know us as pastors this is not the first time we've pastored uh, we take every assignment of God very serious I have become and my wife has become a greater servant today with the privilege of being your pastor if you, it says in the scripture if you want to be great in the kingdom of God you must be a servant to all so now we're just greater servants to you hallelujah would you stretch forth your hand as we pray over our pastor father we bless our pastor we thank you for the love for the tears for the time for the heart and the, the fight that he has fought over each and every one here Father, to bring us to this day. And we love him. We send him forth with expectation. And Father, I thank you that we commend him unto you and unto the gospel, to the mighty, mighty. We, the corner of hope, love him. We love our pastors. In the name of Jesus, we bless him. We don't let go of him, God. We just bless him. <laughs> to do the things that you have called him to do in Jesus' name. We love you. Father, bless this food. Bless our time together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's... Anything else? Well, it's funny sitting. It feels uncomfortable sitting down. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, especially to my mothers in the back there. Thank you for helping me, for mothering me, for calling me. Mama Elma, thank you for being with me on the midnight prayer. Mama Jean, <laughs> Miss Carol there, thank you so much. Thank you, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. The guys from the center, you, the, you rock. You're my world. you always be my world. And Sherry, thank you. I'm, I'll be here Tuesday for a meeting. You will still see me. So, you, you heard the scripture. It said, do not cry. Rejoice. Amen? But every time there is this, obviously. I know. I can't sit down. Mandy, I love you. I love the babies. But it's time to do what the Holy Ghost has said me to do. No, tell me to do. Amen? Amen? So God bless you all. Thank you so much. These came on the right day, right time, been together. They've received the commission. They've received the instruction. They will not, I know them. I love them. I'm confident. Amen? Amen. To my sister, Michelle, Thank you so much for standing with me, for loving me, for telling me off sometimes, <laughs> for just loving me. Amen? Well, I don't know what else to say. Hallelujah. Go ahead. If you are ready to give and come and give. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on up and shake Pastor Kedrick's hand and let's... Give him the right hand of fellowship. Amen.